very uneducated people that have embraced Donald Trump and 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 they they hate Muslims one day and they hate gays the next. Also marching is another minority group under attack at present. Muhammad Baba is from the Louisville Islamic Center. We are here to uh, show our support to our brothers and sisters from LGBT community, uh, especially in the wake of this tragedy. So as a Muslim American, I am feeling their pain. Is it your first Pride Parade? Yes, it is my first, but not the last. For Chris and the Fairness Campaign, the show of support is overwhelming. How was that? Incredible. You know, there were some goosebumps moments along the way for sure to see the, the huge outpouring of support. I mean, it was just palpable. You could feel the community. Sadly, this, this tragedy in Orlando might be the impetus that that really mobilizes and motivates folks to come out, show their support to their elected officials, and actually make some change. Orlando saw the devastating combination of terror, gay hate, and a killer with an assault rifle. I just know she called me and she told me she was shot in her arm and she was screaming and hollering and I don't know anything else. No one can tell me where my son is. He's, he's a good kid. He works at Universal and I'm just hoping we find him. That's all I want. 49 people died, mostly LGBT people of color. 53 more were injured. The shooter, Omar Mateen, was labeled a Muslim extremist, unstable and with easy access to weapons. Those who defend the easy accessibility of assault weapons should meet these families and explain why that makes sense, on why it is that we think our liberty requires these repeated tragedies. That's not the meaning of liberty. Go ahead and insert it in. And give it a little the president's call for restrictions on assault weapons rings hollow here at this Louisville gun shop. Why isn't everybody pissed off at Obama and the Justice Department and the FBI and every law enforcement official that let this guy fall through the cracks? Why do these people just get passed along in our world and nobody does anything about it? And then they're like, oh my God. And then it's the gun's fault, right? No, it's society's fault for not taking care of this stuff. It drives me crazy, sorry. All you need to do is grab this, put it somewhere else. One person gets on it, another person gets on it. Barry Laws shows it. me an assault rifle similar to that used in Orlando. This, right now, if this gun were completely loaded, it's not going to hurt you, right? And, but people are so conditioned because of movies, politicians, and law enforcement that these things are the most dangerous objects in the world that you just have to run when there's one around. So, he so believes young, here. fit men in the Orlando nightclub could have disarmed the killer. Think of this as a baseball bat. Could you not grab this somewhere? I mean, th there's the possibility of grabbing that. That's where my anger comes from, is the training of our society to almost be neutered. And it's the strangest thing. And it's almost like the world wants to neuter America now. We don't want to, no offense, turn into Australia or any other country that has been neutered. Yeah, you, you might think we're whacked, but there's method to our madness. I must admit, it isn't easy to see much method in the madness. Just a reignited national debate over guns, with the shouting getting louder. It's even legal to walk around carrying a gun. Gary Bryce came face to face with one while working at a diner just one week before Orlando. I don't know, it was just like a, it's like a typical Monday night in here. Um, started doing my cleaning in the middle of the night, you know, not many customers coming through at that time. 
An angry customer turned on him. Homophobia and the rampant gun culture were about to combine. One of their friends called me gay. Um, one of them called me a fag. I remember one of them saying, this fag is not worth it, let's go. Um, she started throwing things, she took my tip jar, um, and in the process of all of that, um, pulled a pistol out on me and put it in my face. <laughs> and then um, she just stayed there. Um, and I ran all the way back here into this bathroom. Yeah, it was pretty scary. So the Orlando bathroom aspect really resonated with you because this only happened to you yeah. two weeks ago. Yeah, and it was just, um, I just understood that I was about to die. Um, so hearing those stories about those people, 15, 20 people, you know, hovering together in a bathroom, just literally like waiting to die, um, that made me very emotional um, because I know that feeling. Um, because I've been right here in this bathroom, literally cowering in the corner, waiting to die. After the hype of the Pride Parade, Chris Hartman still has the Orlando shootings on his mind. It was undeniable that it was targeted at LGBTQ folks, and also undeniable that it was targeted at LGBTQ folks of color. Uh, you know, not just what we saw in Orlando, but we've lost dozens of transgender and gender non-conforming people of color in the past year and a half. And the epidemic's got to stop, and, and folks just aren't talking about it nearly enough. Chris is taking me on a journey to conservative rural Kentucky. Chris, where are we now? We're, uh, we're about a, a couple of miles out of the city limit for Louisville. Um, so we'll be uh, passing into um, an area that doesn't include discrimination protections for LGBTQ folks. I'm learning that each county can pass its own anti-discrimination laws or not. And like more than 75% of Kentucky, Shelbyville hasn't. Meaning that if I live in Shelbyville or if I work in Shelbyville, I could be terminated from my job, denied a place to live, or be kicked out of a restaurant or any public accommodation just for being lesbian, gay, bisexual, or, or transgender. Chris has been working for five years here to try and get anti-discrimination laws, but with no luck. That must be frustrating. It's incredibly frustrating. And you know, we've, we've taken every tactic we could. We've been patient, we've asked kindly, we've protested, we've shown up in numbers and, and yet almost no acknowledgement. So this magnificent Shelbyville courthouse is of very little use. Someone like yourself. Right, for LGBTQ folks who face discrimination, the halls of justice are really closed to them. And so I'd been working with a, a young individual who was transitioning uh, on the job. Uh, is a transgender individual and sure enough right after they had been promoted once they began their transition they were demoted. That person is Michael Cartron or Juju as she prefers to be known. I don't know that Kentucky has moved past 1940s or 1950s yet uh, unless you're living in you know a big city Louisville or even Lexington maybe. Juju worked for years in a small restaurant but after recently beginning to transition from male to female, she was confronted by her boss. He made it clear to me that he knew that he could fire me because I was gay or transgender, uh, and legally there was nothing I could do to fight back. Uh, and he made, made it clear that I could be killed and someone could use the panic defense and I would be dead somewhere and someone could get away with that. He said that to you, you could be killed and that someone would get away with it? Yeah. I feel lonely. My entire life has been spent in the countryside and growing up and having to fight to just accept myself, not even find someone else's acceptance was tough. And now to be an adult and then have someone strip that away from me 
with no help from the law. Um, it's heartbreaking. The LGBT community in America has a lot of issues to deal with right now, and they've always had grief from America's conservative Christians. You don't go far in Kentucky without meeting people of deep Christian faith. Today, Frank Simon from the American Family Association is broadcasting to his many followers. Congressman McEwen and Ed Holloway, and God bless you, and tune in again next week for the rest of the news. Thank you. Thank you. I tell you, that's great. Advances in gay rights like the marriage equality bill last year have prompted a concerted backlash from the Christian right. So we uh, have problems with the Supreme Court trying to redefine marriage and redefine uh, all this so that they say, oh, well, now marriage is between uh, two men and uh, their daughter and the, the uh, neighborhood dog and all of this stuff. And there's also the issue of Muslims. Yeah, we can't get Frank is very clear in his view about the reason for the Orlando attacks. Well, you know, the thing is uh, the Muslim religion is an anti-gay religion, okay? And they have been pushing homosexuals off of buildings and uh, stoning them and doing things like that for a long time. And that's all part of their religion. So, you know, that's why, you know, we have to be careful about trying to bring Sharia law into America or uh, trying to bring more and more Muslims, uh, especially the terrorists, into America. Not so long ago, these would have been arguments from the fringe. Now they're at the heart of the election campaign. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. And the fact that this is now a mainstream political idea leaves others stunned. Mr. Trump may be able to become the president of United States of America, but at what cost? How many people will be demonized? How many lives will be lost? This is the question which history will answer for us. Dr. Muhammad Baba, who I met at the Pride March, represents oh. another minority whose views are being drowned out as the national debate turns ugly. As a Muslim, it must be tough being blamed for terrorism, Orlando, and maybe even the bad weather. Now his place of worship has worn the hate. Late last year, graffiti was sprayed everywhere. This drain was whole painted in red, like the blood is gushing down, and then the arrow mark says that kills you. We have not faced this much hatred and Islamophobia even after the tragedy of 9-11. It, it's much, much worse than 9-11. Uh, the, these are very difficult times to be a Muslim in America. In red. Muhammad had, has been on an emotional uh, roller coaster recently. Defacing done on the gate as well. The Orlando massacre came just after the death of Louisville's most famous son. As he was laid to rest here in his hometown, Muslim hate seemed to be on hold. With Muslim tradition and consistent with the wishes of Muhammad Ali. The memorial on Friday, boy, I've never felt as proud as Muslim American during uh, my last 20 years in America. When I heard the news on Sunday morning that Orlando tragedy has happened and the shooter is probably Muslim, it was like somebody punched me in my gut. And we, uh, 
as a community, we thought that, boy, there's going to be a backlash again. And all the goodwill and the vibes of compassion that were generated by Ali's memorial and funeral, that it will be overshadowed by this guy's actions. So what's your plan for the evening? Mohammed is home alone for Ramadan. His twin boys are away on summer holidays with his wife. Bye, and I'll talk to you again tonight, OK? OK. Thank you. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Mohammed says he is now so worried for his family, he's considered drastic solutions. I have thought to own a gun a few times, and quite honestly, it, it, it comes across my mind repeatedly, but then I believe that this is not the solution. Saturday night has arrived, and it seems the Play Nightclub is the place to be. But not everyone's heading out tonight. Gary Bryce, who faced the woman with a gun in the diner, is spending the evening in with his partner Terence. You're betraying the values your pop drummed into you. After Orlando, where many of the victims were people of colour, he says he feels safest at home. Stay out of trouble, that's what I'm gonna do. And he's contemplating what it means to be a minority within a minority, gay and black. Um, gay is something that is, you know, for a lot of um, communities of colour considered to be white. Um, and so then um, you're marginalized by your sexuality within your own community, um, but then you're also marginalized within the gay community um, for being a person of color because of racism. Um, and although a lot of people might not feel like they're individually racist or prejudiced, um, the institutions are still very racist. Back at the nightclub, the party's in full swing. Tonight was extremely important in light of the Orlando tragedy. Uh, seeing the community come together is really healing. Despite the party, there's plenty of reflection as well. So we're going to perform Last Stand by Donna Summers, ladies and gentlemen, and it's going towards the victims in Orlando and the tragedy. So with further ado, help me welcome it seems America's so deeply divided right now, it's hard to know if tragedies like Orlando can ever be a catalyst for change. Next week on Dateline. Are you all matchmakers? Yes. Really? Great. I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the hospital.